In today's video, we're going to be covering the build video that we did quite a while ago, a couple weeks ago, basically. It was the cheapest DJI build you can actually build here. So I have been using this for the past couple weeks, and I'm ready to give in my experience and what you could expect and everything else you might want to know from the pit tune to whatever you want to know. And I have a couple quadcopters next to me so we could actually compare. So let's get started with the frame here. Now, first of all, I really love this frame because it's tried and tested. I have basically three quadcopters with this frame. This is the Gep RC Mark IV HD. So this is a five inch HD. I also have the Gep RC Mark IV. This is a budget build that just the video took off. It's like half a million views right now. I still use this, by the way. This thing is still strong. I've used this frame. I love it. it takes an absolute beating and it has a lot of really nice 3D printed parts you could find online, which increase the overall lifespan of your parts and your, your whole frame as well. And that's what I've done here. So this is why I always recommend this frame. I'm not just pulling this out of my butt somewhere. This is this is really good stuff. And people who have this will also tell you the same exact thing. And recently, again, we did the seven inch, which we'll be covering later on. I haven't flown this just yet. I'm waiting for propellers. Let's start from the outside and move our way inside. I also want to tell you why I don't like DJI. However, it's only in the type of flying I fly. So it, it might not be the same for you, but I'll, I'll tell you why I don't like the DJI stuff. We'll get into that in a bit though. First of all, let's start with the motors. I know many of you hate these motors. I don't know why. These are the Racer Star 2207 2500 KV this exact racer star motor that I really like for a couple reasons. Now, one thing I really love about these is that they're efficient, really efficient, actually. These are for 4S uh, batteries, and I usually get around three minutes and a half to four minutes of flight, depending on how I'm flying here. But what's also really interesting about this is the fact that these could actually take a 5S battery. And the reason for that is it's not because they're super crazy motors. It's because the KV is a lie here. It's a little bit less than 2,500 KV. And you're able to run 5S just fine. And what's really nice with that is because I have 5S laying around, and that's when I tested and figured it out, you can get slightly over four minutes of flight time. And that's really nice, especially on cheap motors. That is really, really great. And I really do love that. It's very predictable throughout the whole throttle range. And that comes very important, especially when you're going to be hitting very tight proximity flying or flying in confined spaces. This is where these types of motor excel, the ones with a very linear uh, torque curve. So that's what we get here. However, now, talking about power and torque, you're not going to have insane fast uh, speed. It's going to be just pretty decent. And you're not going to have insane torque. Uh, you could feel a little lag in the torque coming in, but it keeps it overall smooth. So depends on your flying. For example, if you fly these against the Emacs Eco's 2207s, 2400 kV, which are basically kind of the same class, uh, you will notice that the Emacs Eco's are a bit more powerful. And um, yeah, and maybe a bit better construction quality. But the Emacs Ecos, I think, are almost double the price of these currently. Even though the Emacs Ecos are one of the cheapest, along with the iFlight Shings, uh, the, the iFlight Shings and the Emacs Ecos are more powerful than these motors. But you're still going to be able to do just about anything and uh, enjoy it. And I actually prefer to fly this more because I get more flight time and my proximity flying. It's really gorgeous. But if you're looking for top end cruising speed, or really high speed, these won't be the motors for you. I'd recommend an Emacs Eco or some iFlight Shings. I'll have some link down below. Now let's go down to the stack that we use here. So for the stack, we use the Hyphion RCF7. This thing has so many features and it's basically a new company. This thing has like Bluetooth, dual gyros, F7, nine volt regulator. It had so many things and it came with the ESC here. And I think I didn't even put a capacitor. Oh, no, I put a really tiny capacitor. Now, how did this perform? Well, in the air, it just performed really great. I mean, there was no complaints. I have no issues with it whatsoever. No random reboots. Uh, I can't talk, talk about noise because you don't get noise in DJI feed, but the flight was smooth. There was no stuttering or, you know, the kind of oscillating oscillations from noise. I didn't have any oscillation. So. so overall, I had a pleasant experience with this stack. And so far, I'd recommend it if you could find it. I'll have it linked down below. It's one of the cheapest stacks with the most amount of features on there. Now, the DJI. So it's a love-hate relationship, really. I mean, because most of my flying is very tight proximity flying and the latency is really bad. It's so bad that it does truly affect the flying I do. And I do crash more often due to the latency issues because it's variable. It goes up, it goes down. Now, 
I understand that uh, if you go further away, you get more latency. But what we're talking about is I'm within 10 meters of this quadcopter with clear line of sight and I crash. And that's really bad. I mean, for me. Now, if you're flying through trees and you call it somewhat proximity, you're going to be fine there. But when you compare it to an analog, depending on the video feed, you will find yourself that you're more capable and you feel more confident and your quadcopter just, you just feel like you're in total control because the latency is very static. Well, it depends on your camera, but more, more than likely it's very static. It's not fluctuating quite dramatically here. And you get the frame skips, which really annoy the living hell out of me. This is the reason why I, I don't like DJI. It's just my type of flying. I, I just have no trust in it. Uh, of course, you get beautiful video feed and, you know, there's a specific application for this, but the DJI is not for every application. Uh, that's what I'm trying to say here. And this is the reason why I don't like it, because most of my flying is very proximity and I don't like to put it on something like this. I'm not flying through trees. I'm flying through like hard metal poles that are very close to each other and I want to hit smaller gaps. And this is why I don't like the DJI. So the application does play a big role in the DJI setup here. Now, let's talk about the frame. So the frame took quite a lot of beating, actually. I don't know if you saw that crash uh, in the beginning of, I don't know if I showed it to you, but you'll probably see it now if I didn't. Um, and this is the only damage I got right here. That's it. Everything else is totally fine. No broken arms, no broken anything. And again, I have a lot of 3D printed parts that allow it to have more protection and extend the lifespan of every single thing on here, which is always recommended to do. Uh, usually your battery would get destroyed before these types of frames get destroyed. And that's what's happened to me quite a lot with both of these, actually. Um, there's only one time where I broke the motor, but I don't think I even had the 3D printed parts back then. And um, you, I would have broken any motor. It doesn't matter that it was a race star. It was a pretty damn hard hit against a metal pole just like that. And any other motor would have been broken. And to be honest, it didn't actually break. Just the bottom bent, and I bent it back, and it still works, and I have it as a backup. So I could still use it to be exact right there, but we'll just consider it broken. So any motor would have sustained some sort of damage uh, in that type of crash. And um, so do I recommend it? I do highly recommend it as a really great budget option. And now I'm speaking from experience here. It's not one, two, three flights. It's it's just constant. Every other week I go fly them. And uh, these are the ones that are always in, well, now. This one's also in my backpack. And this is the quadcopter that I always grab because I'm just not worried about breaking it and it always performs. And what's really nice about the PID tuning, I didn't even PID tune any of these. Zero, nulla, nothing. I've done nothing to them. I left them beta flight stock and they fly absolutely gorgeous, which is always a really, really great thing. These frames work really good with default beta flight PIDs. With the GoPro, without the GoPro, 5S, 4S, they just fly uh, really nice. And um, I highly recommend. That's all I really got to say. And this is a true recommendation because this is a true and tried recommendation. I've been using them for quite a while. And well, that's really it. Everything is linked down below, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And come join my Patreon. I do a ton of giveaways. And also check the links down below. There's a lot of things you could benefit from, such as the Ask FPV app, which I've created, where the community help each other if they have any issues or if you have any questions or if you want to help somebody, there will be a reward system implemented so I can give you guys free stuff for the people that help the most. And also come check out the FPV social media place that I've created. It is a place to come and grow your FPV following on other networks. And well, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Woo! <laughs> Woo!